Hello and welcome to AC's 8-Bit Zone. Today I'm taking a look at two different composite video mods on the Coco 1 and Coco 2. That's coming up right now. Hey, in my last video I showed you the Mark Data Products Universal Video Driver Board. Well today I'm going to show you that one compared to Tandy's own solution that they sold in educational models of the Coco. Both of them came out in about 1983 and they work about the same and we'll see them in action in the Coco 1 and the, in these two Coco 2's and with a couple of different TV tuners. So right up front I'm going to say I'm not a huge fan of composite video mods. But they do have their place. It, uh, if you want the best video, uh, take a look at some of my episodes about the Coco DV, Coco Digital Video. Chances are you've seen some of those already. But if you really want composite video, I will I will sell uh, these two boards in kit form. So send me an email and I'll send you some information about the kits if you're interested. But uh, you know, composite video has its has a time and a place. You may want to use co you may want to use composite video if your RF modulator just doesn't even work anymore, or maybe you don't have a TV with an old analog tuner. Uh, but of course, if that's the only reason that you don't want to use the RF modulator, you can still find TVs at thrift shops like Goodwills, and they're they're very affordable. But if you do want to make the composite video mod work, then this episode is for you. So come on in and let's look at the older Coco 2. Okay, so diving right in to this older Coco 2. This is what the composite mod looks like installed. Uh, it's, this is a recreation of Tandy's board. Tandy's board looks like this. It, it mounts in place of the RF modulator and a couple of, of lead wires are routed out to points on the main circuit board to bring in extra power supply voltages. My reproduction works the same. There's still a couple of lead wires that go over to pick up the voltages it needs over here. And there's a composite uh, monochrome switch. That's a selector switch here. And uh, basically just solders in place and in the back there is a, a mini jack with both audio and video and that's meant for one of, of these cables. Like this one. So I, th I think this is, what is this, the um, is this is the three and a half millimeter TRRS plug, and in the back of the TV, there's a, a video connection and an audio connection. Okay, so that's Tandy's solution. It's called Direct Video. Okay, and for the newer Coco 2s. For the newer Coco 2s, the RF modulator was not vertical, it was what I would say horizontal. So here is the, uh, the reproduction board in place. This is, um, this, this could have been the same circuit as in the other board, but I wanted to try something different on this one. This one doesn't require any extra voltages besides what comes in normally on the pins to the main board. So this one's a little bit easier to install and I just wanted to see if it performed a whole lot better or worse than Tandy's solution. So this one doesn't need any fly wires. It also has a channel switch for switching between composite and monochrome and it has the same TRRS jack on the back for the three and a half millimeter plug. 
and uh, both of them have uh, a tuning element, uh, a tuning resistor. The Tandy one had two pots that you need to tune, and this one has one to set the output level for your specific TV. Okay, now let's look at these in action. Starting with the Tandy board on the left, I'll zoom in a little bit on that. Okay, so not an not a perfect image, but a good image. And let's try with the other monitor. Okay, I would say uh, it looks just as just as good on this monitor. Looks a little bit different, perhaps. We'll zoom in on that a little bit. Okay, so not a perfect picture, but not bad, and a, a lot better than an RF modulator that's that's working only partially or not working at all. Okay, moving right over to the other Coco 2 with the Mark Data Products Universal Video Driver Board. Okay, I would say it looks very similar. Let's zoom in on that. Okay, so not too bad. And let's compare to the other monitor. And let's zoom. So I, I think with this TV, I see just a little bit more of the vertical striping. It's maybe not quite as great of a picture. But this, this does beat the RF modulator when it's on the blank. And again, I would say if you have a working RF modulator and you have an analog TV, it's probably just as good as what you'll see here. But if, if you really want a composite mod, I will sell some of these as kits. So I'll send you a, a, a bare PCB, uh, either, either of the styles, either the, uh, the, the vertical style for the older Coco 2s, or uh, the flat horizontal style for the newer Coco 2s. Uh, so the, the bare boards and a kit of components that you would need to, to solder it up yourself. So send me an email if you are interested in that. With both of these mods, it has audio as well as video. So all of that uh, goes through the one, the one cable, which is convenient to have, you know, to have one audio video jack and, and a single cable. That is nice. Well, there you have it. Composite video mods made simply for either the vertical or the horizontal RF modulator. Mailed to you in kit form so that you can solder it up yourself. Uh, oh, and if you want to install one of these in a Coco One, you can do that. You would want to order the um, you'd want to order the Mark Data Products board, the, the one that needs only the five volt supply, and I can give you uh, the connections you would need 
to connect that board into your Coco One. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and happy Septandy. And I'll see you in the next episode, which is gonna be starting the build for an all new Color Computer 3. We'll start with the mechanical keyboard, then move into the new main board and packing it all into a Coco case. So join me for that. I'm looking forward to it. See you next time. Bye now.